Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome to tonight's webinar. I'll introduce myself as well as all of the speakers in a few minutes, but for the time being, uh, I just want to say welcome. We've had a huge number of people register for this webinar, so we're going to have to wait a few minutes for everyone to log in. While we're waiting for everyone to log in, I'm just going to give you a few house rules. First and foremost, please know that this is a fully interactive webinar. So we basically want you to ask any and all questions that you have. So please make sure that you leave your questions in the chat box or even in the Q&A section. We will try to bundle all your questions and answer them at the end of the session because we want you to watch all of the webinar because all of the information is going to be very vital for you. But still, if you want to have a question, if you, you know, if you think about anything spur of the moment, please go ahead and type it in the chat box or in the Q&A section and, um, you know, I'll be able to read it and ask the, um, and I'll be able to ask the uh, corresponding uh, panelists um, uh, the question so we can get it answered for you. We also want you to let us know while you are joining us where you are joining us from. Very excited because I know we've got people joining us from all over the world. A lot of people in the Middle East, of course. And here we go. We've got people coming from Egypt, a lot of people from where I am, Dubai. India, isn't it fantastic? Great, yes, let me know where you are joining us from. Great, so we're just gonna be spending just a few more minutes waiting for everyone to log on or maybe one or two minutes, not, not a lot, <laughs> waiting for everyone to log on. Wow, we've got some, some people from uh, Kenya, Morocco, India, lots of people from India, hey everyone. Great, great to have you, welcome, welcome everyone. So let me first and foremost introduce myself. My name is Crystal. I am the brand ambassador for Payoneer in the GCC region. If you're not aware of what the GCC means, it's basically the Middle East. Um, I am also the founder of a company called Amazon Sellers Society, and we work with Amazon sellers and we help entrepreneurs and businesses sell their products successfully on Amazon in the Middle East. So I know from my community that tonight's webinar and what we are talking about and what we are going to be dissecting with our panelists is a subject that most of you have so many question marks around. So if you are interested and excited as much as I am, and you want to know exactly how you can incorporate a company in the United States from anywhere in the world, I think, I truly believe that after tonight's webinar, you're going to have all of the information that you want. And you're also going to be, like I said in the beginning, you're going to be able to answer or ask rather all of your questions, and we're going to try to uh, answer them as much as possible. And if, don't worry, because if you have other questions later on, we will reach out to you after the uh, webinar is over, and then you'll be either able to reach out directly back to us or to each and every uh, company that is part of our webinar. So we have you covered. First and foremost, we're going to be talking um, uh, we're going to be talking, you know, if you are basically a tech company, an Amazon seller, an e-commerce seller, or an entrepreneur, I know a lot of you are, and you're interested in starting your business in the United States, so this is it for you. If you want to know how and exactly how you can incorporate an S-Corp or a C-Corp in the United States and all the details in between, our first speaker from first base is going to be dissecting all of that. If you want to know banking solutions, payment solutions to help manage and grow your business globally, then Payoneer has you covered with all of that information. And finally, you know, one of the hardest subjects and probably potentially one of the toughest ones for, for entrepreneurs to understand taxes. So we're going to be talking all about taxes, of course, US taxes in this case, with Avalara. So let us get started 
Are you ready, guys? Let's get started. So I think it's, it's, it's enough waiting for everyone to join in. Let's get started first and foremost with Carlos, who is the head of sales and business development at First Base. And Carlos is joining us directly from beautiful Costa Rica. Welcome, Carlos. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Crystal, for that great introduction. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be invited here. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to all of you about First Base and all of their benefits uh, regarding uh, starting a business in the U.S. and how uh, right now the flexibility and the path and the easiness of creating a business is something that is truly remarkable about what has been currently built by us in, in First Base. Um, I am right now in Costa Rica and I come from the venture capital landscape in Latin America. And I'm gonna help you guys understand about uh, everything you need to know about First Base and, and before starting a company, what you need to do and, and where, uh, where we can support you guys in. Fantastic. You want to get started, Carlos? Let's get started because I'm sure everyone is really excited. And again, everyone, if you have any question, as Carlos is, you know, giving us all of the information, if you have any question, please pop it into the chat box, the Q&A, and we will, and please stay with us till the end. I promise it's going to be a very exciting webinar and uh, we'll answer those questions. Go ahead, Carlos. Perfect. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Awesome. So to start, <laughs> first base, it's something very new. Uh, first base is a, a very early stage company. We're in our seed stage and we focus on uh, technology innovations around the company formation process. The first product that we built was the incorporation as a service platform that allows anyone to incorporate uh, with almost no previous incorporation knowledge from anywhere in the world by using our fully automatic platform that allows you to operate, uh, launch and grow your business um, uh, remotely from basically anywhere in the world, in other words. Let me go here. So what does First Space do and, and like where are most of our clients right now? Uh, First Space as a platform, um, so given that we provide a very remote landscape on our solution, we get customers from over 175 countries. And so far we have incorporated over 10,000 uh, businesses in the last year and eight months with, that we have in operations. We are um, aiming towards um, becoming an all-in-one company OS. And by this uh, term of company OS, we mean um, company operating system. And the way that this resonates uh, with us is that we're looking to build uh, most or all of the solutions that companies need right when they start their businesses um, digitally and online. So this can go from um, mailing services, uh, potentially banking, taxes, all, all of these different solutions that people need right after incorporating. We're building products around that stage so that uh, the incorporation product will be uh, only like the first step of the process for most of the businesses that incorporate with us. Right now, um, we are a venture-backed startup. We have uh, raised our seed round from Y Combinator and multiple other investors, including Carta Ventures, the founders of TransferWise, and different other uh, great angel investors that are included in this um, ecosystem of uh, solutions. And what we're trying to offer um, to you guys right now is kind of like an all-in-one inclusive business in a box product that allows you to fully incorporate and operate and run your online business in the US without ever needing to access, um, enter the US without having any citizenship or without having any visa to actually visit the US. Right now, um, most of our founders come from uh, different countries all across the world. Some of our biggest markets include India, uh, Pakistan, the UK, United States, uh, several Latin American countries, Europe, Africa, Nigeria. So we have a lot of people from these countries. You are in the right place. So who is First Base for? So right now, um, 
most of the businesses that we have been receiving uh, in our platform have um, coming have been coming from the e-commerce business, also uh, software technology uh, consultancy or software development, uh, financial services, drop shipping, digital marketing and advertising, manufacturing, logistics, uh, even the local traditional business from the U.S. has been uh, increasing significantly in our audience, given that right now our solution is not only a fit for global remote digital businesses, but also for local traditional businesses in the U.S. Right now, um, our service hasn't, doesn't have any specific um, aim towards uh, serving only one industry. We're kind of like an infrastructure provider so anyone who needs to incorporate a business digitally to make it easier, faster, more accessible, uh, and also cheaper, they usually come to us instead of going to the traditional format, which is contacting a law firm and um, paying all the services that you require to get the, the company formation on, ongoing, also then getting the EIN, and all the different steps that go in between creating a company. I will go back into this uh, in a few slides, but right now, um, in essence, we are looking to build uh, these solutions for people that need uh, an EIN number to access different providers such as Payoneer, maybe uh, other payment processors or even banking in the US. Also, uh, our whole system, given that most of it is automatic, uh, it requires very few work from the customer's behalf into getting access to, for example, uh, the banking solutions that we offer, in which currently we offer Brex and Mercury as a banking partner. And usually after the whole incorporation process is done, we send uh, our customers directly into these uh, applications so that, they can, so that they can get approved towards uh, these solutions that would then will further help them into uh, scaling and growing their businesses. Also, uh, we have been uh, receiving a large volume of venture-backed startups that are from different countries that they just want to set up their holding in the US to potentially raise uh, funding and gain credibility from USA investors, which is very important to have a USA structure as for um, globally, investors usually look for the, the USA entity structure uh, when they uh, create fundraises for for their uh, portfolio companies. Also, we usually get companies that are looking to either launch uh, digital uh, operations in the US or hire directly people in the US. For this, uh, given that we are not a payroll provider, we have multiple partners in our network that uh, helps them with uh, benefits, discounts, and other type of solutions after you create the, the main infrastructure for your business so that then you can hire people in different states. So I can mention a few. We have uh, Deal, we have Gusto, we have uh, um, Trinet, and we have different other like HR solutions so that you can correctly set up all the structure you need to hire correctly in the US with all the liabilities uh, taken into consideration. So something that is really important about First Base is that we are taking out all the bureaucracy of creating a business and putting it into a software that automates almost all the flow of the incorporation. And this uh, not only helps to avoid mistakes, human mistakes during the process, but also allows to deliver the entity in almost a record time compared to the traditional system. So what's included in the first base package? The company formation process goes this way. When you first go into our website and you fill up the form, uh, which takes less than five minutes, the, um, the form creates automatically an account for you. And then when you log in into that account, you get an option to pay for the service, which is $3.99. And as soon as the payment is um, processed, that it triggers the whole backend system into the automatic flow that generates all the documents that you need uh, when you incorporate the business. So this includes the company formation documents, which basically tell you that this entity, uh, which, he, which can be an LLC or a C-Corp, um, is registered in Delaware or Wyoming, which are the two states that we currently incorporate in. And after that, it tells you like 
all the documentation and certificates from the state, re uh, registering the business directly into the into, into the jurisdiction that you are uh, wanting to in incorporate. After this step, um, this is usually happens the first week after you incorporate, around two or three business days it takes to get these documents generated. After the first step, we run into all the operating agreements so that we can correctly set up the structure um, into a fully remote manageable uh, business. And we use our register agents and different providers to set up this structure so that when we receive the documents, uh, via our mailing services, it gets automatically uploaded into your accounts in your in your in our platform, and you can digitally access all these uh, important documents as soon as they get generated and delivered to the address that corresponds all the documentation, and they get uploaded to the system. So usually, um, the the whole step of the incorporation process takes around uh, twenty days for international founders. 20 to 30 days. This is the standard average from different uh, customers from all over the world, uh, multiple countries, that's the global average. But in the US, uh, if you incorporate directly from the US, it may take uh, fewer days to get your company fully incorporated. So coming back to the stages, when you get the operating agreement uh, or the operating agreements um, that Intel the whole structure about how your business is set up in the US so that you can fully remotely manage it uh, without ever needing to go and access the US to uh, do any sort of uh, solution or, or, or framework. Um, you, the third step you get is the EIN. So the EIN is kind of like the tax ID identification number that the IRS provides the IRS is the tax uh, regulatory system in the US. And without an EIN, this is like the, the, the key point when you incorporate a business because without a, an EIN, usually it's very hard to get a, a business um, banking account and also access to most of the different providers that are accessible in, in the US. So the EIN is usually that step that takes the longest and delays most of the process. But in average, um, given that we generate most of these documentations automatically, we have some record times of execution around getting the whole process plus the EIN and then um, providing you access to banking solutions within our same platform. Right now, we're building different uh, services and products within our app so that you can uh, create one-click signups to most of the correct um, tools in different industries, either if you want to hire people, if you want to access a payment provider, if you want to access to banking platforms or different other solutions, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you so that you can, um, as soon as you get the EIN, be able to apply to all of these companies and get your structure further on executed without much hassle on your behalf. So the whole package, uh, it includes, in other words, a USA address, which is a mailing service, uh, free tax and legal consultations from our partners, such as uh, Bookmate and different other providers. We get um, over $150,000 in startup perks and benefits uh, from a very long range variety of solutions in the US so that whatever you need to access after incorporating, you may have a solution from a reward standpoint and save a lot of money in the process. Uh, we also have a dedicated support for life for the people that incorporate with us. And our customer success um, team is very high quality. We usually get very uh, fast response rates. And um, our founder club, which is coming very soon, is something that we're building to further enhance your customer journey within our application. So how are we different from other providers? Um, we know that we're not the first provider to be in the business and we're possibly not gonna be the last one, but the difference between us and most of the tools out there is that this type of solution is the only product that we have built uh, because we want to build 100% of the process so that you don't need to worry about anything. Most of the companies out there, 
um, at the end of the day, you need to uh, incorporate a business and usually you require to do some extra steps manually uh, outside of the actual services they, that they offer because either the times of executions are not uh, very efficient or the, the whole infrastructure that you need is not very uh, friendly for remote companies, in other words. So there's, very, um, there's a lot of like inflexibility from different other providers about how you structure the business to correctly manage it uh, fully complied during the first year without any problems along the way. And that's what we're trying to solve for our customers to kind of like enable a system that works for everyone and in everywhere and be able to access uh, all of the, the infrastructure solutions and tools that they need right after incorporating with us. So some of the, the top facts uh, around the company formation process in first place is that we offer uh, limited liability companies, which can also be called LLCs and C corporations, um, usually for venture backed businesses that are looking to either issue equity or get fundraisers in, in the US. Uh, the most common uh, incorporation setup is to set up a Delaware C Corp. Um, and usually, for different type of businesses like e-commerce businesses that are just starting and they can operate remotely in the US and they just need access to the infrastructure of solutions in the US such as banking and, and all the, the small details are along the way after like, for example, getting access to Pioneer, which will come uh, after this presentation. Um, they usually incorporate either a Delaware or a Wyoming LLC, which is the easiest and the and the most simple solution for e-commerce businesses right now. So uh, popular industries around the LLCs, which is possibly the majority of the attendees right now, uh, they usually come from e-commerce uh, businesses. They come from the cons consulting services, small businesses, software businesses, uh, freelancers, uh, also contractors and different other um, structures that allow people to create an entity almost like a, as, a, as a bridge towards the US, but they don't, they're not correctly yet ready to fundraise or maybe to issue equity to their employees. So they go to the simpler format, which is the LLC. So um, do you need to be physically in the US? No, as I mentioned before, um, our system is built for remote companies. We ourselves are a fully remote company, and we try to enable a solution that uh, democratizes the whole company formation process. The only restrictions that we receive are directly from the US. Um, the US has some countries that uh, you are not able to incorporate uh, legally if you are a resident or if you are citizens of these countries mentioned here in this slide. Um, usually this is, uh, because of political reasons, maybe uh, there's, um, there's some countries that are like a red flag by the US when creating businesses. So what they do is that uh, we, they just get blocked within the whole system in general, but it's not that first base blocks these countries from incorporating. It's like the system that we usually build upon on that blocks the incorporation from these type of residents or citizenships. So what does the process require for a usual customer? Uh, in general, as I mentioned before, it's a, like a five minute step process in which you uh, first detail the type of entity and what state you want to incorporate in. And then after that, you fill all of the personal information, the shareholding uh, distribution. So how many percentage of shares owns every, uh, every founder, if there's multiple founders, and right after that, um, you pay for the service. As soon as you pay for the service, uh, you receive a, a DSS-4 so that you can sign uh, automatically as soon as the, the entity is fully registered in the state, which usually takes like around two days, two or three days after you first pay for the service. And in, during this whole process, all the other uh, operating systems and all the other operating structure run simultaneously 
as we apply for the EIN. So that's why at the end of the day, in average, all of the documents get generated between 20 to 30 days, which is record time compared to most of our competitors, which some of them can take around uh, four to six months just to get the EIN in, in essence. Right now, um, given our timeframes and our distribution of products, uh, we are also able to provide um, a, a full solution so that you can, in the future, get a um, digital presence, uh, such as a domain, a business email, potentially a website, and get access to all of the advantages of the first space network, which are the over $150,000 in benefits, um, which is very significant considering that our price is $399. At the end of the day, with all the perks and benefits that we save after incorporating, the investment that you create uh, by uh, using First Base gets paid off multiple times uh, along the way of your company's journey. So we want to be very transparent and we want to include all of the costs that you will incur after the first year. Um, important to note, our service of 399 includes everything you need to do and operate on the first year. So if I incorporate today, <clears throat> I will need to pay, uh, for example, uh, in a year after this, um, all of the recurrent fees, which are, for example, the mailing services, which starts at $9.99 every month. This is like the service that receives all the documentation from the government and then it into the system. Um, if you incorporate in Delaware, you have to pay an annual franchise fee of around $300 every year. This is something that is liable to every single business, whether you make sales or not. And it's stated by the, the actual state that you incorporate in. These are like the state fees, in other words. And in Wyoming, this annual reporting fee is around $50. The register agent, which is the, the structure that allows us to serve remote companies, usually it's around $50 a year. So if you add up the costs in different scenarios, whether you incorporate in Delaware or Wyoming um, and add up the mailing services and the register agent, those are the extra ongoing costs after the 399 after the first year, but not during that first year. The first year that fee, those fees are covered by the same 399 fee. So that's why we are very competitive in the market. And every time that we try to uh, help founders around this journey. We try to make sure that they understand that the first year they're basically operating a business that is worry-free. And the only extra thing that they need to do after the first year at the end of the year is to file their taxes with either one of our partners, or maybe we can talk about it uh, later on with our, um, with our attendees here from Avalara. So why do people choose first base? We have been seeing after the COVID pandemic, a lot of different um, new trends that are coming uh, into the world, which are basically to automate and also simplify uh, traditional flows or traditional systems. And that in essence is what we're trying to solve for this industry. We're trying to make all the legal infrastructure and framework as easy and as understandable as possible so that anyone can actually create a business and focus on growing a business instead of all that bureaucracy that goes beforehand and that usually blocks many people from starting their own businesses at the end of the day. So um, given that our solution is fully digital and can be operated remotely from anywhere in the world, um, you can, we, we're trying to enable this so that every step of the way that you cover the incorporation process, you know exactly what is going on and you know um, what you're gonna expect and also how long does it take in average to get these type of entities up the ground. And no matter if you have experience on it or not, we try to provide the whole 100% of the process for you so that you just need to focus on growing the business instead of just uh, uh, worrying about all the small details around the incorporation process, which can be very complex in some point. Uh, for all the attendees that are um, hearing us today, um, we activated a special 15% discount for the 399 incorporation fee, 
which uh, basically is <clears throat> triggered under the code PAYO15, which is P-A-Y-O 15, all in capital letters, upon the checkout page in our app, so that you can enjoy about um, our incorporation with a 15% discount in our full service, uh, which basically covers all the year after incorporating as well. And thank you everyone for listening to our presentation and uh, I'm excited to hear about the other panelists here. Thank you so much, Carlos, for the valuable information. So many questions coming your way. So for everyone, I'm sure you have a lot more questions for Carlos. I want to remind you that uh, we will be answering most of your questions. I'm not going to say all because we might not have enough time, but we will get through all of your questions for sure at the end of the session. Please keep them coming. We're seeing all of them. And uh, I'm sure Carlos has answers to all of your wonderful questions. And I want you to know if you are finding uh, valuable knowledge and you're getting valuable knowledge from this webinar, please go ahead. And if you know anyone who should be part of the webinar, you want to invite some of your friends, it's not too late. Uh, you can invite them and let them come in so they can get valuable information. So everyone can start a successful business in 2022. Now we talked about incorporating in the US and the steps in order to do that with Carlos. Of course, we have to talk about money and how you can manage your money globally to be able to grow your business from anywhere to anywhere. So let's get started with uh, Kavish, who is the uh, senior manager for partnerships in the South, East, South Asia um, uh, area. And he is a part of the wonderful Pioneer team. Kavish, all yours. Thank you so much, Crystal, for the lovely words, uh, non Pioneer. And thanks, Carlos, for setting up a great context uh, and uh, helping all our attendees learn about opening a US entity. So, <clears throat> The step one is complete, right? Now you have a US company or now you want to start accepting payments from your clients from across the globe. The obvious next questions that you would have in your mind are, what is Payoneer? Okay, I already know about Payoneer. Can I open a US uh, Payoneer account? What are Payoneer features? How Payoneer is different from any other payment solution? Why should I sign up? Hold on to all your questions. I'll cover each one of them throughout the presentation while I walk you through what we do, where we come from, and why Payoneer is a must have for your business and something uh, that will help you only grow upwards uh, in your cross border journey. So, <clears throat> just to give you a quick background, as Crystal mentioned, I'm a senior partnership manager here at Payoneer for uh, South Asia region. I work with partners, clients, customers, uh, anybody who wants to use Payoneer to grow their business. So let's talk about, uh, before we jump on to what the Payoneer product is, let's uh, see overall how the digital commerce uh, has grown over last one, two years, right? I am sure bunch of the people's, uh, bunch of the people uh, that are attending the event right now, they would have started their business in last two years. While they would be doing something else pre-COVID, COVID-19 has enabled sellers, uh, customers, companies to individuals to grow their business, grow, grow cross border. So if you look at it, the shift is happening from B2B to B2B to C. The shift is happening from B2C, uh, B2, B2B to C to B2C and vice versa. So Sellers, customers are using different supply chains, different mechanisms to sell cross-border. Uh, selling from one country to another has become very easy. Uh, you could be an IT company in Ukraine and have clients in India. You could be uh, a service provider in uh, UAE and have clients in the US. The world has become a small place in the last two years. And uh, the COVID-19, uh, I'm sure everybody is bored of hearing about COVID-19, but COVID-19 has been a great accelerator in growing, uh, in making the world a smaller place and helping grow digital businesses much faster than ever before. So just to give you a quick background, uh, 
this specific slide is not the most recent one, but we are now a public company uh, as of July, and we are a company listed in the US on NASDAQ. Uh, Payoneer is a fintech solution for individuals, for small and medium-sized companies, for large companies, for everyone. We have a solution for each one of you. You could be an individual from uh, Nigeria planning to open a US company thinking, can I get a Payoneer account or can I not get a Payoneer account? Payoneer is for each one of you, wherever you are, whatever you, uh, wherever you are in your journey right now, in your cross-border business. So we have 4 million customers, work with different marketplaces, bunch of things that we do across the world. So <clears throat> I would ideally take compliance in the end, but uh, talking about it right at the start, so Payoneer is a highly compliant company. We have the necessary licenses required in each geography in the world, US, UK, India, Bangladesh, uh, Europe, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, everywhere in the world, we are highly compliant. Uh, globally, we are a PCI DSS compliant company and we, uh, we follow level, level one compliant uh, protocols across the globe. So you don't have to worry about your money uh, you don't have to worry about your payments. You don't have to worry about anything uh, when you are using Payoneer to receive or make payments. So let me talk about some of the top logos, some of the top brands that use Payoneer. Uh, I've tried to list down in freelance, content creation, e-commerce, vacation rentals, rentals, digital marketing, etc. cetera. Uh, all these top companies use Payoneer to make payouts. Let's take an example. Upwork is making payouts to freelancers using Payoneer. Amazon is making payouts to sellers using Payoneer. Walmart is exclusively using Payoneer to make payouts to sellers. So all these companies trust Payoneer for their cross-border pain or payout requirements. So the idea to put this slide is to make you feel comfortable about the fact that Payoneer is the only solution that you need to build your cross-border. So let's take a deep dive into uh, not really a deep dive, but let's look at high level of what we do as a product. Uh, <clears throat> you can use the Payoneer account to get payments from marketplaces, uh, the ones which I just mentioned right now. Secondly, and one of the most favorite things of mine in Payoneer, you can use the Payoneer virtual bank accounts to get payments from direct clients as well as marketplaces. Let's take an example. Uh, you are a company in Dubai. You create a US company with first space, and now you want to receive a payment from a client in UK. So you create a Payoneer account for your US company. You get your payment from your UK customer using the Payoneer virtual bank account number, and the funds are automatically available in your Payoneer banks. So Payoneer makes it very simple for you to receive payments from B2B companies, clients, uh, partners, anyone in your uh, Payoneer account, just like if it were a local account. Uh, the third one is you can send payment requests to your customers. Uh, they can pay via cards, debit card, credit card. You can make, you can accept payments uh, directly from other Payoneer customers. And you can also connect Payoneer to a payment gateway like Stripe, PayPal, et cetera. For example, if you open a first base company, uh, a US company through first space and you want to accept a payment from Stripe, you could connect the same Payoneer account number in Stripe and get the funds in your Payoneer account. I'll cover all of this in deep, but this is high level what we do as a product. Uh, additionally, of what I mentioned, Payoneer also offers you best in class currency conversion rates. We have a very strong ecosystem of more than 4 million users and it's growing every day. Uh, <clears throat> we offer you integrations with invoicing platforms, ERPs, et cetera, and bunch of uh, partners globally to be able to create a very close ecosystem. And we also help you with VAT, et cetera. Uh, just to call out, Avalara will talk in detail about taxation in the US. So if you have any questions around the taxation bit, uh, you can cover it in the next session. For now, with Payoneer, you can pay your UK and Europe VAT using Payoneer. So, Let's talk about the key features in detail. Uh, I think the first one is something which everyone is aware of. Payoneer offers virtual bank account 
in more than eight currencies. USD, Canadian dollar, Mexican peso, GBP, Euro, Japanese yen, Singapore dollar, all these currencies, we offer you a local bank account with top banking partners. We work with Citibank, Deutsche Bank, and these are virtual bank account numbers offered by these top banks, uh, available for free, and you can use them to get start accepting payments either from a marketplace or from a direct bank. So these virtual accounts form the nucleus of the Pioneer product and are an, are an important solution to help you grow. Uh, wire account is something I am very confident that most of you would not be knowing about. So uh, you should uh, have a look at it very uh, focused and learn about it uh, of how you can use it in your uh, overall expansion. So Pioneer very recently started offering a wire USD account number, a very special account number with an American bank. You can use this account to accept a US dollar wire from anybody in the world. So for example, if you are a company based out of Nigeria, you open a, a US entity or a US company with first base, and now your client in Australia only wants to pay you via wire US dollar draft. They don't want to pay you via a local bank or any other mechanism. We have you covered. You can activate your wire US dollar account in your Pioneer account and accept this payment from your Australian client in US dollars. So it's a very essential tool for companies which are exporting, for IT companies and anybody who is accepting B2B payments. Okay, so the wire account is something which I will request you to keep a note of uh, and activate one once you create your Pioneer account. Uh, Pioneer store manager is specifically for e-commerce sellers, for Amazon sellers who have multiple Amazon accounts. They can use the Pioneer store manager to get payments from different Amazon stores in one Pioneer account. UK and EU VAT, which I covered right now, this is again specially, specifically for e-commerce sellers who are making, who want to make a VAT payment in the UK and in the Europe, they can use uh, Pioneer Balance to make the payment directly to these authorities. Very simple, free of cost. There is no fees involved in making a UK and a EU VAT payment. Uh, this is something which I spoke about a few minutes back, uh, the Pioneer, account can be used to make payments to suppliers bank or any contractor or any freelancer or any developer directly in their local bank account. For example, if you are an IT company based out of, let's take a new country, Bangladesh, and you want to make a payment to your developer in Ukraine, you can directly transfer funds to their Ukrainian local bank account using Pioneer. So that's the beauty and that's the power of the Pioneer network, which allows you to make a payment to anybody anywhere across it. Uh, manage currencies, very simple. You can convert balances within your Pioneer account from USD to GBP, GBP to Euro, Euro to AD, AD to Japanese Yen, and all of that. So makes it very easy for you to avoid double currency conversion charges. <clears throat> Last but not the least, and I think, uh, one of the most famous Pioneer products, the product that made the company famous and is one of the most essential growth drivers, uh, the Pioneer card. We have recently launched the Pioneer virtual card, which is issued by uh, issued through MasterCard. Uh, the Pioneer physical and the virtual cards have very good limits. Uh, you can you, you have spend limits of up to $100,000. You can use these cards to receive, uh, to basically make online payments to Google Ads, Facebook ads, Apple ads, uh, any online service provider for domain hosting or anywhere in the world. We can issue multiple cards to a single Pioneer account. So if you have five Facebook ad accounts, if you have six Google ad accounts, you can use different Pioneer virtual cards to accept, uh, to make payments uh, for your uh, monthly expenses. And you can use these cards, not just on marketing advertising platform, but on any other platform. Uh, so these cards are something which are very essential for a business which is growing. I have personally interacted with small companies who are growing because they were able to get access to the Pioneer card. Uh, towards the end, just to give a summary, with Pioneer, you get virtual account numbers, wire account, uh, ability to send 
payment links to your customer so that they can make a payment by a credit card, debit card. You can use the Payoneer account to accept payments from all these sources. Once you have funds in the Payoneer account, you, then you can either withdraw it using a local bank account. You can withdraw to your local bank account. Use the Payoneer funds to make a transfer to another Payoneer account. You can transfer funds to your supplier, freelancer's bank account, or use the Payoneer card to make the payment or spend it online or offline. So this is a quick summary of what the Payoneer ecosystem looks like. Uh, the story is same for any kind of business. Amazon seller, dropshipper, IT company, freelancers, anyone, the system remains the same and uh, all of these features are very specific use cases as per the vertical. So I'll share this sign up link with all of you with uh, on an email after this one. You can create your Payoneer account. You get a $50 bonus after you receive your first $1,000 from Payoneer in first six months. So uh, the idea again, is to ensure that you use Payoneer to grow your business. We are here as your growth partners. And with wonderful partners like First Base and Avalara, I'm sure that they will help you grow. Open, go open your company with First Base. Uh, take help from Avalara with US taxation. They'll help you grow. And uh, if there is anything else, you can feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn or my email, and I'm happy to help. Uh, but for now, this is everything about Payoneer of what we, we what we can do for you and wish all of you good luck for the upcoming year. And I'm sure that uh, your US company dreams, uh, you realize all of them. Thank you so much and over to Crystal. Amazing, thank you so much Kavish. We've got so many questions also for you Kavish. Uh, we've got Christopher asking, uh, if he can use his Payoneer account um, or how he can open multiple questions by Christopher. Uh, Ola Dimeji asking if he can withdraw the funds or transfer from Payoneer. Someone is asking if Payoneer works on WordPress. So many questions, but you guys have to wait till the end of the session so Kavish can go through all of your questions one by one um, and we can, uh, you know, uh, get those get those answered for you. Now it's time to, you know, you cannot talk about business, unfortunately, without talking about taxes. Um, so taxes, especially U.S. taxes, is potentially something new for, for most of you if you are not uh, living in the U.S., and I know most of you are not. So Anil, the director of Avalara, will be able to shed some light Lots of information, please focus. And as always, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them and we'll be able to answer your questions whenever Anil is done. Anil, over to you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Crystal. Um, I'm sure none of you actually likes to deal with taxes. Tax is an enemy of business many times. So winning against this enemy, first of all needs, uh, an understanding of who the enemy is and US taxes, especially indirect taxes, is one of the <clears throat> most complex monsters that you're gonna find, but don't worry, we are here to help you with that, pretty much automate the entire process. We are a public company uh, listed on New York Stock Exchange, a SaaS darling. Uh, just to introduce a little bit more in numbers, we've been in this business more than 17 years, all we do essentially is tax compliance in an automated way across the globe, not just the US. Lots of customers from small sellers all the way to you know, big, uh, huge Fortune 500 kind of companies. Um, we have lots of technology integrations, pretty much every software that you work with, you know, we do integrate with that. We do uh, prepare taxes uh, that result into you know more than thirty six billion dollars remittances in the u s. Uh, we process uh, ourselves through our service as well as you know um, people who use our software, more than three million uh, returns every year. And the engine is built for scale. Um, we process you know almost one hundred and eighty million tax engine calls or inquiries every day, right? Pretty much undisputed global leader in indirect tax automation software. It's not just me saying that. 
if you look at the latest IDC marketplace report in our domain, you know, that's the pink big circle. That's what we are, uh, undisputed leader, as I said, right? Uh, just introducing the enemy to you so that you know how to slay the enemy. Uh, it's the US sales tax. We're focusing on the US today. Um, it is sales tax. It is sort of a pass through tax. And I'll explain that a little bit more um, that consumers pay. And if in those cases where the consumers are not charged tax at the time of the transaction, then the consumers are supposed to pay it themselves. And that's called the use tax. So, so you'll always hear this term US sales and use tax, and that's what it means. And as I said, it's a pass through, which means the B2B transactions are not taxed. It's only the consumers that are taxed. This is quite different from the VAT or GSP that you may be aware of. It's only the consumers of a product that tax, right? So that sounds very simple, right? But it is not. The reason it is an extremely complex process is because everyone else in the supply chain, if they are a B2B uh, transaction, if they are not consuming the product that they are buying, then they are supposed to produce an exemption certificate at the, at the time of every transaction so that the uh, tax is not charged to them. And that creates a tremendous complexity into the system. Plus there are many other different types of special taxes. I'm not gonna go through those, but if you are selling uh, communication products or even communication services, right? Then you are liable to pay uh, more complex taxes on top of these. Um, US sales tax, uh, is not a national tax. Every state in the US, there are 50 states, five states don't pay any taxes or they don't have sales taxes, but every other state decides pretty much whatever they want. And it's almost like herding the cats because they don't listen to each other, they don't work with each other, they don't pay attention to each other as to what other states are doing. Pretty much every state decides what is right for them. If you look at the average um, sales tax rates, then they're all over the place. And I'll explain, you know, some of the hairy complexity of the U.S. sales tax system a little bit later in actual numbers. Um, it is complex also, not just because, you know, it's, it's multiple states and so on and so forth. It's because all these states uh, constantly, almost constantly keep on changing the tax system, if I can call it a system. It is not a system, it's just a, it's just a hodgepodge of things, but they keep on changing it, right? That's because sales tax is a cash cow for most states. And so what it means is they change it all the time in order to raise more money or you know, put more money into the system or into the economy. And the reason they choose indirect taxes all the time is because, you know, most of the consumers or voters, they are voters, right? They don't really realize it as much, uh, unlike the direct taxes or income taxes when everybody's pissed off if the direct taxes are changed. So some examples of how, how um, complex this can be, right? During the pandemic, for example, the state of Ohio said, hey, you know, uh, we want people to take out food and not come into the restaurants to eat. So dine-in into the restaurant was taxable, but takeout was not taxable. In Wisconsin, for example, people wanted, or the state wanted uh, students to learn from home. And so live digital education was tax exempt, certainly made tax exempt, by the way. It was not that way to begin with. But you know, all the businesses, the webinars that we are currently on now, those kinds of things were taxable. And not just pandemic, but anything that happens bad in the world, then you know, uh, governments actually create incentives and in tax. And then obviously it's a government, so they take away those incentives as well. So every time they change something, your system actually gets screwed up because your system needs to know what the new tax rates are and how it is changing, right? So this kind of changes create tremendous volatility in the system, which creates a lot of complexity. How complex? 3,000, that's a number of changes in the US sales tax laws and rules and regulation. I'm not talking about the rate changes, right? Something changing from 15% to 18%. No, 
That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually laws changes is almost 3000 in 2020 alone. That's like 10 changes a day. It's not just in the US, we track it globally, 35,000 changes across the world in all the uh, sales tax rules, regulations, laws, et cetera, et cetera. We keep track of all of that in an automated way. There are 80,000 websites of tax websites all over the world that we track on a daily basis and then keep our system updated. This is a nice uh, map of a neighborhood in the US. And the reason I'm showing this is US is complex in the world, probably unique, that two neighbors uh, maybe living you know, just a few yards apart or a few meters apart may end up paying completely different taxes for the exact same product that they are buying because of the way the tax jurisdictions uh, are set up in the US. So, so that means that in order to calculate the right tax for every transaction, you need to actually know which exact physical address that transaction or that product is going to. And that creates another layer of tremendous complexity into the system. You will hear this word quite a bit after you incorporate your company and you know, start selling and then get ready for taxation nexus, which means essentially that you have a, an official relationship that is now built with the, uh, with the US sales, uh, with the sta state where you are selling. And, and now you are liable actually by law to collect sales tax and start remitting that sales tax. And how complex it can be, that kind of nexus relationship can get triggered without you knowing it. Even something like, you know, attending you, your people attending trade shows in a state may actually trigger a nexus and suddenly you find that you are liable to pay taxes. By the way, this is not only if you U.S. presence, even if you're selling from outside U.S. completely, right, you may actually trigger nexus and you may have to collect sales taxes from the buyers in different states in the U.S., even if you have never set foot on, uh, on the U.S. soil, right? So there are physical nexuses because you're there or not there. There are economic nexuses because you sold a certain uh, number of uh, items or certain value items, right? Uh, another complexity, you know, different products in different states can be uh, taxed completely differently. A big category is tax, but some of the uh, local categories or, you know, subcategories are not taxed. This is an example. If you're selling software, almost 450 ways are taxed. Software is taxed in all these states. If something like cotton bud, right? It, it could be called cosmetic in one state, but medical in another state or both in some states and they are taxed completely differently or candy bar. So, so this list goes on and on and on and we help you deal with that. Um, just to sum, there are 14,000 tax jurisdictions because there are lots of counties and cities. They have their own tax systems, even though there are only 50 states in the US there are almost 50,000 different sales tax rates. That's mind-bogglingly insane. And if you multiply all of that by 150 million addresses that you need to take into account when you calculate your tax for a single transaction of a single product, you can try to understand how hairily complex this is, right? But again, we are here to help you with that. Uh, our platform, our tax is what helps it completely automates this process for you, whether you are in the US or outside the US. Uh, there are a few questions that we ask, you know, where are you qualifying as Nexus? We help you qualify. We help you actually figure out where you qualify. We help you register there. We tell you where you need to collect taxes, where you don't need to. We tell you how much taxes to collect, depending upon how you're selling, uh, in different states. If you are a B2B, if you're not a consumer, we tell you how to get exemptions. We actually manage all those exemptions for you automatically on our platform. And then when it comes to calculate, you have calculated the taxes, you charge the right taxes to the customer, time to file those returns and remit those taxes, then we help with all of that as well. So a simple process, 
looks very simple. You just determine where you have nexus. You register in those states. You start charging and collecting sales tax and you file and remit tax. Looks very simple, sounds very simple, but extremely, extremely complex. We have our platform that actually automates each one of these steps for you, right? Uh, I'm not gonna go through this entire platform, but when it comes to taxation, you need to know uh, what the taxation system is. Those are insights on the right side. We have platform for all that tax research, actual calculations, returns, all your exemption management, you know, all the registrations in different states, and obviously payments to the government, right? That's what we do. We are absolutely integrated. Some of our products, I'm just gonna highlight, you know, uh, we talked about the sales and use tax calculation product. We also have a unique product if you are selling cross-border, which helps you come up with the right HSN code for every item. We have a database of almost 3 billion products that, that helps you do that instantaneously. Amazon, for example, has a database of about 300 million products. Ours is 10 times bigger. We help you with all the cross-border customs uh, charges, customs duties, et cetera. That's all automatically calculated in our system. And then we help you with returns. I talked about cert capture, which is essentially the exemption management part. Uh, talked about Avalara licensing, especially when it comes to some of the business licenses related to taxation or also outside some of that. I talked about the integration. We are probably by far the most integrated company as far as taxation is concerned. Pretty much any ERP, any point of sale, any marketplace, any e-commerce platform that you're working on, we are integrated with that so that, you know, right out of the box, most of the times you can actually uh, get ready for taxation, right? So our platform is global, as I said, we do it for 180 countries across the world, not just US. Uh, it's proven, very robust, very scalable, and just a couple more numbers. You know, I promise these are the last two numbers I'm gonna show you, but they're cool, 8 million. These are the number of transactions are uh, platform actually processes every second, right? And about 3 billion, as I said, these are the number of products we have. So if you have a product, you don't need to worry about coming up with a HSN code or uh, tax calculation, um, uh, you know, research, et cetera, because it's, uh, the chance is very high that we already have that product in our database or its category. That is who you, we are. I told you about the complexity. Don't worry about it. We are here to help you with that. And if you uh, use um, the Payoneer Avalara subject line in your mail, when you connect to us or call one of these numbers, we'll be happy to help you with that. And we'll also um, help you with a value added consulting and uh, risk assessment, a substantial, substantial value. Thank you very much. And I'm ready for all the questions. Thank you so much, Anil, for uh, the incredible insight and seriously making a, a, a problem that seems to be a very big problem easy through Avalara. Let me get started with a question for you, Anil, since uh, you just uh, finished. Our first question is, when do I register for tax in the US? Do I wait for a few months of sales and then do it? Uh, it depends upon where you are. If you form a company and presence in the US, if that particular state has uh, sales tax, um, you know, Carlos talked about the best state being Delaware. One of the mm -hmm. reasons is, you know, it's easy to register I and mean, easy to incorporate, but also it doesn't have sales tax. So you don't have to immediately register. There's no sales tax. Unfortunately, Delaware is so small that except for President Biden and a few people, nobody else lives there. So you mostly will be selling outside the state. And so you will have to uh, register there, at least in the state where you are. In other states, you register as soon as possible. As far as Nexus is concerned, different states have different uh, thresholds as to when you hit the Nexus, if you are not physically present in that state. But 
we help you with you know figuring out all of that our automated platforms also based on your transactions will tell you uh, beforehand that it's time to register because you're hitting the nexus perfect nexus. Thank you so much, Anil. Uh, and your team has, uh, the Avalara team who is with us as well, has just, um, uh, they just, they just mentioned an email if you didn't get it. But anyways, if, if, if you want to ask uh, Valara directly questions, you can go ahead or you can just pop in your questions right now. So Kavish and Carlos, we've got a lot of questions and Anil as well. Um, let's start with a question uh, for you, uh, Carlos, from Mohammed Zeki. Mohammed is asking, what are the benefits of establishing an entity in the U.S.? versus the GCC or the MENA countries? If Do you have any insight regarding to that, Carlos, please? Yeah. So first of all, it depends a lot on the type of business that you're starting. If you're looking to raise funds or um, get access to USA banking, it, it's very likely that you will need to set up a USA business. But for example, uh, given that, uh, for let's say what Avalara mentioned before that they don't uh, need to pay sales tax in Delaware. This makes uh, the USA incorporation in some cases when you don't have local operations a tax haven as well. So when you register the business in the US and you don't have any local operations in the US and you operate the business in other countries, that means that you are not liable to pay local taxes. And at the end of the day, um, it makes the whole structure smoother faster, more reliable, given that the US is the industry standard for um, for business structuring. And it will definitely work in any jurisdiction to have first a um, bank account in the US and then transfer whatever funds you make in the US to any other country, which is very friendly with most of the local jurisdictions that, that you may have in your local countries. Perfect. So I guess this is also an answer to uh, Ihab's question. He just put it in right now. If I'm incorporating in Delaware and sell outside of the U.S., do I have to pay sales or income taxes? I guess that was the answer as well. Yeah, it depends. Income tax is a little bit more complicated. If okay. I'm not mistaken, maybe the team from Avalara can help us yes. with this. Uh, but I believe that if you have a business that is operating in in another jurisdiction besides the U.S. and you just have the U.S.A. as a holding, you don't have to pay local U.S.A. taxes. But at the end of the year, you do need to file some sort of form that uh, notifies the IRS that you don't need to pay taxes. But it's not that you don't need to do anything at all. You have to do some documentation, but it's not paying taxes in essence. Perfect. Thank you, Carlos. Anil, is this an easy question for you to answer or uh, should Ihab contact you and the Avalara team? So the question is, if I'm incorporated in Delaware and sell outside of the US, do I still have to pay sales or income taxes? If you are <clears throat> selling outside the US, you know it's really, as far as sales taxes are concerned, where you are selling to is, uh, you know, that country's laws actually govern, you know, what kind of taxes you need to actually pay. Um, there may be uh, cases uh, because of, you know, some of the local jurisdictions, it really varies from state to state. As I said, you know, different states have different uh, uh, laws, but if you're selling outside the countries, then, you know, really that country's um, taxation system and, and rules and regulations kick in. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Aymad and Rua, I saw your questions and I'm going to ask them to Anil. Go ahead, uh, Carlos. Yes. Uh, important to add is that if your local country has global taxation, you may need to uh, pay mm. taxes in wherever you sell. But mm. if they don't, the structure in the US can serve as a tax haven in a lot of cases. Perfect. Carlos, actually a question to you since I have you. Uh, I've got a lot of, once you shared the uh, list of countries that were not you know, able to, let's say, uh, register a company in the US, a lot of people uh, uh, asked, and one of them was Eli from Lebanon. He's saying that he is originally Lebanese, 
and Lebanon is one of those uh, countries that are restricted. However, he is a resident of the United Arab Emirates and he has a UAE residency. Does that make any difference? Yeah, so uh, there's two ways that these restrictions work. For example, if he's from Lebanon, uh, if he lives in Lebanon, he cannot incorporate with us. But if uh, if he is not like citizenship wise for Lebanon, there's no restriction. But okay, if you so it's live where in you, Lebanon, okay. yeah. uh, there's a restriction around that. So in his case, uh, I believe that he can actually incorporate a business because he currently lives in the UAE, which is not blocked by the uh, United States at the moment. The only countries that are restricted by citizenship is Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Syria. All the rest are uh, free if you are a citizen of these countries. Uh, okay, so it's more or less on the kind of, uh, uh, unless you are from those countries, it's more or less related to where you reside, not who, where you are from. Exactly. That's why there's like two blocking categories by citizenship and by residence. Perfect. Um, Anil, a question uh, from Imad. He's asking, what is the collective percentage of taxes you provide from your total earnings from one pin and from retail business? I hope I'm reading it correctly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, as I said, you know, this really depends upon where you are selling because every state is different. And um, you know that uh, the rates may be different. The states have their own rates. Uh, cities within the states have their own rates. Some cities don't. Some cities do. And then there are something called counties also, which is between the city and the state. And those may have their own rates as well. And and it's very gets very complex. So for example, in Delaware or Oregon, there is no sales tax anywhere. However, in Alaska, the state doesn't charge a sales tax, but some of the local jurisdiction, the cities, et cetera, may charge it. So, so it really depends upon what you are selling and where you are selling it to. So all the tax rates really depend upon that. Perfect. Uh, uh, another follow-up question from, well, it's, it's not uh, related, but another question to you, Anil, from Rua. If we, if we or, or maybe this is something Carlos would answer, you guys let me know. If we, if we basically register a company now in December, do we have to file taxes for 2021 fiscal year? I, I can yeah. talk from an indirect uh, tax point of view. You file taxes only when you sell and you collect taxes from the buyer. So uh, just because you formed a company now, even you know maybe January in 2021, but if you did not sell anything that was taxable, then you don't need to do that, right? It, it really triggers when you actually, um, when you actually collect taxes. Perfect. Thank you, Anil. That's uh, very clear. For everyone who is with us, uh, Kavish has just shared with you a special link if you want to register for a Payoneer account if you don't have one. Know that pay, opening a Payoneer account is 100% free. And we will, you know, through this link, you will get some additional perks. So go ahead and open a Payoneer account. We want you to become Payoneer users. Uh, Kavish, we have a few questions for you, but one last question for, uh, for Anil, well, not last question, another question for Anil and Carlos combined. So Carlos, uh, a lot of people were asking if, if they sell digital products, if they sell courses, subscriptions, not physical products, would it be fine to register a company in the US via first base? Yes, that is the biggest majority of our um, usual businesses, digital businesses that sell services, or maybe they're like drop shipping and they don't have direct uh, like physical storage of the product that they're selling. Uh, that's also a, a possibility. The only thing that is important to note is that even when you're selling services, if you sell them to a specific state, for example, if you incorporate in Wyoming and you sell this service to people in Wyoming, um, you're liable to pay for taxes in that state because uh, for Wyoming, that's uh, the scenario. For Delaware, I believe that it's not needed. Uh, maybe Anil can help us with this, but 
uh, it really depends on where you sell more than what you sell uh, in, a, in essence. Yes, and, and Anil, just to, uh, just to preface uh, another question from Hussein, who's asking, do I need to pay taxes if my business is operating in Delaware and selling products to residents in California, for example, and his business basically sells digital products and courses? Absolutely. California, in fact, is one of the most heavily taxed states in the US. So yes, even if you are based in Delaware, which does not have sales tax, if you sell to anybody in California, you need to collect charge taxes to them, to the buyer, collect those taxes, and then remit them to the, the tax authorities in California, right? Um, and yes, it is for digital products as well. So really, you know, pretty much every product, whether it's a physical product or a service or, you know, digital product, if you're selling courses, if you have even uh, a platform where people play, you know, mobile games, you know, you are essentially selling those subscriptions, you are liable to actually collect and pay taxes. And by the way, you don't actually have to be in even in Delaware. If you are selling, let's say you are in Bahrain or you are in Qatar and you're selling these services to anybody in California, even if you don't have any presence in the US, you are liable to actually collect and pay taxes. And I, I want to emphasize this fact because uh, I'm really glad that a lot of you are thinking or, of incorporating in the US. You know, first base will help you tremendously. Uh, Pioneer will help you tremendously. But until you come to that point, if you are already selling from wherever you are into the US, you are already creating a tax exposure for yourself. And what may happen is that by the time you're ready and you actually incorporate in the US, you may actually have a penalty at that time because that is when you actually create a US entity. And in general, the, top, the cost of non-compliance of taxes in the US can be anywhere from three to 10 times the cost of actual compliance, right? So be pretty careful wherever you are, if you're selling anything into the US, I think you, know, you need to actually understand and find out you know, what the tax implications are. Perfect. Thank you so much, Anil. And again, I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of questions. Please do reach out to uh, the Avalara team with some more additional so they can help you once they have a lot of uh, additional insight. Carlos, uh, a question to you from uh, Max. Uh, Max is saying, in my personal O1 visa legal pad, the legal team are asking me if my company has a business license. I incorporated via first base. But my business will be focused on selling monthly subscriptions to our users in Latin America using Stripe as the payment platform. Do I need to get necessarily the business license to operate? Well, in this case, it depends on what type of business he's operating because that structure that you're mentioning is something a little bit more generic. So mm -hmm. really depends on either his line of business requires a specific license in the US or not. Uh, or if he's using Stripe to bypass this, uh, this uh, type of services, right? So what he needs to explain uh, to the um, legal pad team is like all the information about the company, even the EIN, which we already provided them, uh, I believe, uh, in his case. And after that, he needs to um, just explain like the full flow of the business and also how he uses Stripe maybe to go uh, on top of the local regulations around these uh, business license requirements. And after that, uh, he possibly won't need to actually have a business license because the EIN would be more than necessary in this case. Thank you, Carlos. A question to you, Kavish. Uh, I found a lot of people asking, why they would not be why are they not able to transfer money from their bank account to their payoneer account why is it just that they can receive money from you know uh companies or or uh, marketplaces for example yeah, so i think that's a great question uh, so there are some restriction around uh, self-funding a payoneer account a payoneer is only a b2b 
payments platform and uh, you can only receive payments from direct clients or marketplaces we do not support payments that come in uh, from your own bank account that's a regulated restriction that we have perfect clear thank you so much kavish uh, two last questions, one for you, uh, uh, Carlos, and one for Anil, and then we will uh, wrap it up and let you guys go and have a rest. So, uh, Carlos, a first question uh, or a question, because this is not the first question for sure. <laughs> We've already answered a lot of questions and it's been very exciting. So a question from uh, Hussein, I believe. Can your address be used? Can can the address that they get when they register a first base company, can it be used for Amazon USA account creation? Because Amazon sometimes wants like verification address, like a utility bill, for example. Uh, how how in this case, you know, how can first base help? So in this area, there's like different uh, providers that can solve this problem. Right now. Um, just by having the EIN and the registered address with our register agent is more than enough to open uh, an Amazon account and be fully compliant. If he gets requested more information, he needs to uh, submit the documents that usually are available within our platform so that the Amazon team can understand the structure that he operates in and just bypass whatever restriction that they have on his account. So we do have a lot of Amazon sellers in our network. Uh, this is a, a very big um, chunk of our of our monthly customers. And at the end of the day, uh, when they incorporate with us, they usually have all that they need to actually get a fully liable Amazon account sell, um, Amazon seller account. Thank you so much, uh, Anil. Yeah. Um, a lot of people asking about the dropshipping business model. So Christopher in particular is saying if he has a dropshipping model whereby his products are being shipped from China to customers in the US um, and he has set up his company in Delaware, does he still have to pay taxes? He's just trying not to pay taxes. <laughs> so he's trying in any way, shape or form. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you have your company in Delaware, if you're selling within Delaware only, then you don't need to pay taxes because Delaware doesn't have sales tax. But if you're selling anywhere outside Delaware, then you need to pay taxes. Collect taxes, first of all, uh, from the buyers. Charge tax, write tax to them, and then collect those at the time of the transaction or payment, and then re, uh, remit that to the states where the buyers reside. Great. Um... Will Avalara, another question, will Avalara take care of tax remittance across states where we have collected tax? Yes. So we actually offer a treasury function where we actually do take care of tax remittance for you. We work with a variety of states. Actually, the states have, um, we are one of the very few providers who actually are uh, authorized by the state to, to, to offer this kind of treasury function to sellers. Perfect. Um, and last question to you, and this is going to be the last question. Um, I am concerned about huge fees charged by CPAs for filing returns. Using the Avalara automation platform, do I still need a CPA for filing returns? <clears throat> Generally not. Uh, if there are um, you know, extremely complex cases, which is very rare, but the whole point about having an automation platform like ours uh, is to actually be able to do it yourself. If you are a, um, um, you know, a fairly standard kind of business, it doesn't matter that your products are really exotic and different, right? But unless you have a lot of, you know, really complex transactions, I don't think you need a CPA. You pretty much can do it yourself. Perfect. We, of course, have a yeah. um, you know, tax return filing service as well that goes with it. So if you don't want to do it yourself, you know, we will be able to do that. And generally, you know, uh, advisory and all the research is something that is available to you as part of you know, our offering. 
Thank you so our much. Research, Anil. Our yeah. research is not really, you know, legal sounding. So uh, if you go to our research platform, you know, go visit Perfect. our or our TTR product. It's actually plain English. So we actually hmm. convert all the legal mumbo jumbo and jargon into really simple English so that everybody can understand what it is. Perfection. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of follow up questions. Uh, I'm sorry if I wasn't able to get your question across. I'm sure you have a lot of uh, additional questions. You can, uh, once the webinar has ended, you can just opt to get uh, contacted by the team, by Payoneer, by uh, Avalara, or by uh, First Space if you want more information. And you can just go ahead and visit the websites of all of the companies. If you have any additional questions, I'm sure you'll be able to get more support. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to our wonderful panelists. Thank you, Carlos, Anil, and Gavish for all of your insights and knowledge. And thank you guys, everyone who joined us in the webinar. Thank you, for pay thank you to Payoneer who uh, put this all together. We are very excited for 2022, we believe. 2022, I personally believe, I'm sure everyone here also believes 2022 is going to be a year of fantastic growth, especially if you are a digital entrepreneur, if you sell products online, if you have online solutions, if you want to grow, get yourself ready, go ahead, register your company with first base, open a pay in your account and contact Avalara for your taxes. You got yourself sorted. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. I must say from behalf of all of us, you know, uh, thank you very much, Crystal, for thank a you. wonderful, wonderful steering of this. <laughs> uh, I hope you have a few slots available to be a brand ambassador <laughs> for us, you know, many other companies who are definitely going to be big selling into US all over the world. Hopefully. Thank you so much, Anil. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Carlos, and everyone else. Thank you so much, Chris. It was a pleasure joining uh, this webinar today, and I Me hope too. there's more to come. Same here. Hopefully. Thank you very much, everybody.